Hello and welcome to the Media Play News Podcast. I'm your host, Charles Parkman. And I'm co-host, Charlie Showley. This week, we're going to revisit Avatar 2 and check in on Ant-Man's theatrical release. Next, we'll move on to Netflix, who have quietly removed the feature from their product in their quest for sustainable profitability. What feature is it? The answer may surprise you. Last, Charlie will give a rapid-fire review for the first half of the new season of You, also on Netflix, as well as for the Korean reality show, Physical 100. Charlie, how you doing? Uh, I can't complain. Um, it's been a pretty light week, um, content consuming wise. Uh, as you just said, I've only seen two full TV seasons. Uh, well, actually, it's two halves. So really one season of TV in a week, <laughs> which is pretty low for me when I think about it. Um, you and I actually just did a couple episode recordings for the show no concessions run by a mutual friend of ours and that led to uh, the three of us watching an impressively stupid movie from the early 2000s called stealth about an ai jet fighter that goes rogue Uh, it was a lot of fun to watch it was two very very long hours well spent that i will never get back (laughs) Uh, but no regrets all things considered uh when that episode posts uh i will include a link to it because yeah do some cross promotion yeah it's a lot of fun to do uh but yeah i'm just too busy with a little thing called life to watch uh too much stuff uh how about you uh kind of in the same boat um aside from watching uh stealth which i found was on uh was on paramount plus and uh, just happened to be at a friend's house when i was like hey i gotta watch this movie for another podcast uh for my friend's podcast and they were like where can you watch it and turns out on paramount plus so i didn't have to uh pay to watch it (laughs) nice um someone else was paying to watch it and um i've also been you know busy adjusting my living situation that situation has been resolved um, so now the next couple of weeks will be a uh, slow because I'll be moving. Awesome. Glad to uh, hear it. Just, just a slow trickle of moving stuff. So I don't have to hear everything in one big day. Um, but I did manage to make it out, uh, this weekend. Um, when I was supposed to be in Mexico city for a wedding, I was instead here because the passport office betrayed me. <laughs> and so, um, to, unsad myself for a bit i did go out and see um and man in the wasp and we'll talk about it in the uh in the box office section but um i had fun with it is the short of it um but we'll get more into that right now but first this week's inspiration is uh the costco uh scotch i was in costco getting stuffed peppers because i like the co- i like stuffed peppers but i don't like uh all the prep it takes to have stuffed peppers and costco sells a six pack of pre-made stuffed peppers for yeah, 20 bucks awesome and it's worth it and since i was there i was like well, i'm not gonna get just stuffed peppers and because i had to walk past the booze at that particular costco to get to the stuffed peppers and i was like you know what <laughs> we've been talking about the costco and trader joe's booze <laughs> so let me grab that uh that mysterious costco scotch and the verdict, how do we like it? It's fine. Yeah, that's about what I expected. It's like, it's not bad. Um, it's definitely it's like, I'll often drink scotch neat. Um, but there's something about uh, this one that it is not good uh, at room temperature. <laughs> so as long as you had a big old square ice cube in it or round ice cube, you're cool. Um, as long as I got some ice in it, it's uh, it's solid. Yeah, an ice of your favorite geometry. Uh, <laughs> it's going to improve it. Uh, over here, uh, I'm just hydrating myself with no inspiration whatsoever. Because like I was just alluding to, I have yet more life stuff to do as soon as we <laughs> finish recording. I need to keep my wits about me. All right, well, let's, get a, let's lead with the box office. Um, you would have been insane to think anything else, but Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania smashed the box office with a $120 million opening. Avatar 2 had a surge as well, leading it to overtake Titanic as the third highest grossing movie of all time. Yeah, they finally pulled it off. Um, 
I, I knew it was going to do well, as I've said multiple times already, but I just cannot get over how annoyingly right James Cameron was in saying, yeah, yeah, everybody's going to go see this twice. Don't worry about taking a bathroom break because you'll catch the part that you missed the next time you come and see it. <laughs> Uh, and I just want to call special attention to December last year when Avatar 2 first came out because there was a wave of articles that all rushed to be the first person to label Avatar 2 as a flop uh, from one particular example, December 18th. This is coming from Business Insider. Their headline, quote, Avatar 2 fails to live up to box office expectations <laughs> on its opening weekend bet, putting pressure on Disney's $2 billion bet. Uh, hilarious. Uh, I hope that guy is a little more careful with his predictions because, yeah, they, they've they gone and smashed $2 billion. I think it's crossed $2.3 billion. It's definitely in the 2 point teens. Um from what I found, uh, each of these sequels, so this is Avatars 2 through 5, are supposed to cost $250 million each. That's crazy. Yeah, so that's putting all four of them at just like a production uh, budget of a billion dollars. Uh, double that for marketing. You come to $2 billion. I guess that's where they're getting that figure from. And with their very first movie, they've gone and recouped everything for the next three. So uh, Disney is going to be building one or two more theme parks, uh, I think, from all the money <laughs> they're going to be making from this. Uh, but enough about Avatar right now. Uh, nobody cares since everyone's seen it like four times by now. Uh, Charles, as you were saying, you went and saw Ant-Man. And given that this is a breaking news movie podcast, how do we feel about this? It's fun. Um, I don't think that it's. I don't even think it's the best uh, Ant Man movie. Um, it's definitely not the best Marvel movie. Uh, but it's fun. It's engaging. Like um, it doesn't spend as much time as I. One of the things I was worried about was I was going to spend a lot of time, uh, like doing a bunch of setup for the rest of Phase Five, since this is the first film of Phase Five, um, and it doesn't do that um and like it, there's some um, like there's hints at bigger things but it doesn't actually like spend too much time setting up other things you know like it, we get a brief hey here's where things are like this is the first you know big thing post end game like post like phase four um here's how scott is doing and then we're into the plot like with like we're into the quantum realm um, within like 15 minutes. It's very quick. And then things are happening. And um, I th I'll say the thing that like does it the most for me is how like interesting uh, visually the movie is. Like obviously it's all very heavily CG and not all of it is composited super, super well. Like that's, it's just where we are with um, how Disney and Marvel specifically tend to, uh, kind of rush production or like make a lot of last minute decisions, which affects you know the quality of the CG. Yeah, I stuff. I'm seeing a ton of people dunking on it just with out of context clips. And Great. granted, it doesn't all look like the best movie, but those people are haters. I'm a critical hater. I have good reasons <laughs> why I don't like Marvel movies. Uh, I, I like to think I can do slightly better than eh, looks like spy kids. Yeah. Like it's like, I don't think it's the, uh, again, I don't think it's, it's definitely not the best Marvel movie. I don't even think it's the best Ant-Man movie, but it is fun. Um, I don't think like, it's not like a, it's also not really like a must watch just based on what I, what I was able to glean from, you know, where it, what the rest of like the uh, multiverse saga is going to look like. It does very little like to really like lean on setting stuff up. It just kind of is its own story. It does, it does do some like interesting, fun visual stuff. Um, a lot of the humor still works. Some of it doesn't. There's some clips floating around of some of the like weaker lines. Um, and you know what? 
it is what it is. Uh, <laughs> Marvel movies are they're doing what they they're doing what they're gonna do. Um, the humor in these all like is always has always been hit and miss. Um, even like the Guardians films, which are like the funnier Marvel movies on purpose. But all that isn't all. All that humor doesn't hold up either. So it's like I'm not gonna super hold it against it, but I'm also not gonna. I wouldn't hold people not digging this movie against them either. Like I get it from both ends. Um, it's fun. It's like it's a it's a um, theme park ride. I think it's like you know they've been described as such as like Marvel movies described described that way. It's a theme park ride, and it, in my opinion, it's a good one. Yeah, uh, one of the. One of the actual legitimate pieces of criticism I've seen of this and like the last few movies they've put out is that Marvel movies are starting to feel like parodies of Marvel movies where their spectacle of like CGI, like avalanche, some of it of questionable quality and then severe like tonal whiplash from humor to, oh, we're going to talk about serious stuff real quick. And then a bad guy who's more interesting than the whoever the lead is. Yeah. Yeah. The the only reason I would want to see this and as much as I talk down about these, I always end up seeing just about all of them <laughs> is just to see Jonathan Majors as, you know, Kang, the new Thanos replacement. Uh, but Dude, I'm, he's so good. Yeah, I'm just going to wait. So good at I'm going to wait for it to come out on Disney Plus or whatever, just so I'm able to you know, skip forward like 10 minutes or so whenever I get bored. Yeah. It's, this is definitely one where like, I wouldn't hold it against anybody if they decided to wait until a higher profile thing comes out. Yeah. Um, So it, it definitely did a lot better than the last two. Um, like the first one made 50 million on its premiere weekends. Uh, the second one 75 and this one now 120. So people still love these movies. Um, as you know, we were talking about before with one in six movie tickets going towards Marvel movies last year, like that's, that's not slowing down at all. My prediction of this movie having kind of like a mid to lackluster opening, uh, sounds like it has not borne out. So I sound just like that business insider guy saying avatar two is a huge flop and nobody's going to go out and see it. Uh, lots of people went out and saw this. Yeah. I mean, it. It's already made 250 million on a 200 million dollar budget, which uh, you know it's it has justified itself at least financially. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's not really a whole lot. Like I said, I haven't really fully formed my thoughts on it. I'm probably going to see it again now that my uh, partner is back in town from the wedding I was supposed to be at. I'm still definitely not bitter about it. <laughs> um, it's uh, but yeah, when I, I'll probably have a more fully formed opinion, and by the time it's on home media, we can talk about it then. Terrific. Okay, let's move on. All right. Uh, Charlie made me read uh, that terrible pun from earlier in the episode intro, which I did not realize was a pun, and now I'm mad about it. <laughs> uh, what next? What feature from Netflix was removed? The answer may surprise you. It's a surprise me button. Uh, they got rid of the surprise me button. Yeah. Uh, so if you're like kind of racking your brain on what exactly is this thing that may or may not be connected to why they removed it in the first place. Uh, Charles, have you ever used the surprise me button on Netflix? I didn't even, I didn't even know there was a surprise me button on Netflix. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like one of those product features where I forget it exists until I just happen to see it like 10% of the time I'm using Netflix. And then my thought process always goes, surprise me. Oh, that's kind of interesting. That's a, a unique feature to put onto like a, a long form content streaming platform. Let me uh, check it out. Oh, that's not very interesting. Oh, that's not a good recommendation either. I'm just going to watch <laughs> the thing I was planning to watch already, or I'm going to scroll through the endless carousel of Netflix things until I choose to watch something that I've seen already. So yeah, I, I like I don't know how you feel about them taking it away, but it's it's not even going to affect anyone at all. The fact like, that it's not like there I would, anymore. I'd be surprised if most people even notices notice that it's gone because like that's such a, it's such a weird feature for 
a library that big and like it's not like hitting shuffle on a playlist of like music <laughs> like at least like that's tops you have 35 seconds of like a bad song or like a song that you don't want to listen to in that moment and you keep going but like who's because there's so much on Netflix you need to surprise me and then you're watching a film in Hindi that like you didn't <laughs> know you know was on Netflix like maybe you you know maybe you'll like it but like it just seems like such a weird like the whole promise of streaming is how like curated you can like make your experience but the idea of a surprise me button doesn't make any sense to me yeah and it's like completely the wrong type of content to even like cycle through it like okay google has that i'm feeling lucky button next to their typical search also Mm. which nobody uses it just serves whatever the very first result for your search is going to be so if you compare this to something like tiktok where it's all short form video and if you don't like something you can just instantly scroll past it with movies i see absolutely no utility in just being forced to watch something that they're telling me trust us you're gonna love this like it if they paired it with like trailers for movies or shows instead of the full movie itself then i can see it being maybe a better tool for discoverability but as it was it just feels like some kind of netflix summer intern project where They took all the data they had on the type of stuff they're already recommending to users and putting it into just like a random number generator and spitting out, okay, well, here's this thing that you would have seen anyway if you were scrolling far enough down your content feed. Yeah. Uh, So, you know, maybe they're getting rid of all the features that people make fun of them for uh, on, on a quest to try and like, make themselves the de facto streaming platform. Uh, I don't know. It's slow news week out of Netflix, I guess they need to deflect from people complaining about the password sharing crackdown and, you know, charging for, for access. Uh, But moving on from that, uh, we're going to stay on Netflix and start talking about some of their popular shows. Uh, We'll close out with a lightning round of said top shows, including the ones that Charles said that I'd be giving micro reviews at the top of the show. You season four debuted with double the viewing hours compared to season three. Uh, So this is pretty cool. Uh, I mentioned this when we were talking about the most anticipated February shows, and they took this season in a slightly different direction Uh, First being they only released half of the season. The next half isn't going to come out until second week of March or so. And the formula that this has been following up until this point is the protagonist is some kind of creepy stalker loner and then finds a target and somehow worms his way into her life and tries to get her to fall in love with him and He's just kind of like obsessive and creepy the entire time. Three seasons of that has gotten kind of old. So rather than (laughs) just continuing with that format, they made a point for him to uh, go to a completely new setting. So he's in Britain now. The show has been in the U.S. um, up until this point. And he is now being stalked. Not all the details have kind of like fully come out yet. Um, Again, it's just hinted at a bunch of stuff because only half the season is available. But taking the attention away from him following someone to he is now being followed and he's trying to find out um, who is spying on him is like a cool new take on it. And then you kind of just see like a new element of his character because up until this point, he's kind of been the one in control for the most part. Uh, And now he doesn't have all the answers. Um, So that was really great. Um, I highly recommend checking it out um, if you haven't seen it before. Uh, Then um, another show, this is coming out of South Korea. Remember how we talked about there were going to be like over 30 
South Korean shows and movies coming to Netflix this year. Like I still can't right. wrap my head around that, but <laughs> the top one now is a reality show called physical 100, uh, which is what you would get if you crossed squid game with American Ninja warrior. Uh, okay. Have you, have you heard of the show, Charles? I have not, but again, I'm not a heavy Netflix user as we talked about. Yeah. So the deal with this show is they take a hundred people and they're all people from backgrounds that emphasize like physicality and strength and agility and stuff like that. So they take athletes, wrestlers, former Olympics gold medal winners uh, MMA fighters, soldiers, and then some like models and like fitness influencers, those types of people. And they put them through like a series of challenges where they have to compete against each other to find out essentially what is the best physique. Uh, so they have some individual like one on one type uh, matches. They have some team based games and then people get dropped or eliminated from the show and mass kind of like how squid game is a funny element of that is given that squid game is a show from South Korea. And this is a South Korean reality show. The show participants are talking about, Oh, this feels kind of like squid game, which is like uh, really, really self referential um, and kind of funny. But these people are like absolutely ripped uh, to the point where, like half the women I feel like would beat either of us in any of these <laughs> games they'd be showing. Uh, so it's a lot of fun. Uh, the last, the last gimmick of the show is each contestant has kind of like a plaster cast of their uh, torso on display. And when they get Sorry. knocked out of the the running, they just have to smash the cast of themselves. That's so, fun. Yeah. It's really funny seeing some of their reactions where there's like, Someone who's like 200 pounds of pure muscle saying, I wasn't good enough. I'm going to work out for 10 more years and then try out <laughs> for this game again. And you're like, no, Jesus. please stop. Don't do this. You don't have to do this. Yeah. Uh, so that that's a lot of fun. Um, I haven't finished it yet. Again, I'm about halfway through, but it's better than this next show that I'm going to talk about. That's trending on Netflix called Perfect Match. Uh, it's Netflix's attempt to make a connected universe of all of their other popular dating shows. It sounds like a horrible nightmare, so I can't wait to watch it. <laughs> uh, and then, um, given that we're still in February, if you wanted to keep the Valentine's Day energy going, there's the romantic comedy Your Place or Mine with Ashton Kutcher. And I stopped reading the synopsis of it there. <laughs> but given that it's number one trending for now, some people must like it. Uh, and then out of Poland, there's another romantic comedy called Squared Love All Over Again. Uh, I'd like to believe this is a movie that's kind of like a love story between mathematicians, but it's not. It's a sequel to Squared Love. And features a celebrity journalist and a teacher in a relationship with each other. Uh, in my opinion, they could have just run with it and called it Squared Love Squared. But that's why I work on a podcast and not on movies. <laughs> yeah, real missed opportunity there. Yeah. Um, I, on the other podcast we were on, I went on a tirade about two reality dating shows. Um, one very good, one very bad. Uh, the good one it's called, um, temptation Island. And the bad one, which is running right now is called milf manor. And as much as I would like to go into detail on it, I'm afraid we would lose our like, non-explicit label for this show <laughs> let me just tell you that everything that can go wrong in a dating show does go wrong on milf manor they it wouldn't surprise me if they canceled the show before the season even finished airing oh absolutely yeah so given that i'm still waiting for the next season of temptation island to come out I might just have to bite the bullet and try watching perfect match. Um, they combined, uh, too hot to handle 
and the ultimatum and then one other show that I hadn't heard about before uh, with contestants from those reality shows now all combined together on this new one. And, uh, you know, there's something about the mind of someone who is like a serial reality show participant where they're just drawn to getting owned on TV like over and over. So if I ever happen to see that, uh, I will update, I will update you on how it is. Uh, but my expectations are <laughs> not good to put it simply. Oh, well, fingers crossed that, uh, <laughs> it's at least entertaining. Yeah. All right, that's going to wrap us up for this week. You can find links to these articles in the show notes and at mediaplaynews.com. You can subscribe to the site's mailing list using the subscription link in the notes. You can email us directly at mediaplaynewspodcast at gmail.com to have your comment feature on the show or find us on our new Twitter account at podcastmpn. If you like the show, leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to podcasts. We really appreciate it. I'm Charles Parkman. I'm Charlie Shirley. And we will see you next week. Sweet. <laughs>